Cece Summers and I am already so sick of this man. <laughs> he hasn't even fully gotten started yet. Like, I can, I can tell this in my soul that he hasn't even begun to show me crazy and I am already so sick of him. <laughs> so last time we had left the compound, I mean, we didn't even really leave the compound. We went compound adjacent with the children and somehow this constituted me getting choked out into unconsciousness and now I'm in his house box, his box house. And somehow now I have to plot my escape while somehow also bringing along 10 plus children. <laughs> I wake inside of Mateo's box. I don't know how long I was out, but it's already nighttime. My mouth feels dry and I struggle to sit up. I clutch my stomach, unsure if I'm hungry or if I want to throw up. Each movement sends a pounding ache straight through my forehead. My hand reaches to massage the skin, but I can't lift it. Done. Done with the shenanigans. Around my wrist is a handcuff. It's attached to, I swear to God, if it's attached to Mateo, I'm going to chew through his arm. <laughs> hey, hey! Hiya, Cece. You sure slept for a long time. Feel better? Okay, I, I wasn't asleep. This was not a peaceful REM sleep with dreams of prancing sheep and puppies. This was me being fully unconscious because I dared to help the children inside of the compound. What? I thought you might be dead, but you were still breathing when you passed out, so you're fine. Yes, that's the only qualifier. You're breathing, you're fine. I don't agree. I would not describe the current circumstances as fine, but I'll keep that to myself. I hold up my hand and struggle to wipe the look of disgust from my face. I got you a pretty bracelet. You should say thank you. There's a nice necklace around your throat, too. Does he mean his handprints, or did he put a chain around my neck? He reaches up to trace the skin on my neck. It's sore. His touch triggers an involuntary jump as the bruised flesh throbs. You're mine. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew he was referring to his stupid little tiny baby hands on my neck. You're mine. You don't like my touch? Don't you love me? You ran away with me, so you must feel it as much as I do. I feel something. I open my mouth, lost for words. I didn't run away with him for a life like this. I thought he would bring me somewhere safe. I would be safer with Sergio and the others, but it's too late now. Is this my punishment for being nice to Mateo? Let this be a lesson to you. Don't be nice to people or you'll get chained up in their box house. Don't you love me? Any hope of saving myself drains from my body. I can't bring myself to say anything. I see. So that's it. <sighs> Since you hate me so much, I'll be glad to end that suffering. Then you'll really love me. So by ending my suffering, he means to kill me, right? Right? Like, we're on the same page with this, so... I can't love somebody when I'm dead. What do you think is the best way to approach this with him? <laughs> Something tells me he's not feeling very receptive right now. <laughs> He draws a switchblade from his back pocket and flicks the blade out. It glimmers in the moonlight, poised in his hands like a viper. I try to scoot away, but the handcuff won't let me far. The antics! Mateo drives the knife into my throat. 
He grins as my life's blood pours out over his hands. My heart pumps more and more, a sanguine wave that drowns my vision into black. I didn't even get through one scene. <laughs> That wasn't even a true ending. I, it. Oh, <laughs> Fucking fine, I guess. Yes, I love you. Sure, whatever. There's nothing else I can say. I don't have any choice if I value my life. I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I knew it. I'm gonna make you so happy, Cece. I mean, considering that his definition of being fine is that you're still breathing, do not have very high hopes for his definition of happy. <laughs> Maybe his definition of happy and definition of fine are exactly the same. <laughs> considering that each time I look at him, I can only imagine him beating that person's face in or his hands around my neck or worse. The chance to make me happy is long since passed. I need to get out of here. M Mateo, the corpse that was in the alley. Who was that? <laughs> Earlier today, before you... I passed out, there was a dead man in the alley. The kids shouldn't see something like that. They're probably scared, and you take care of them, don't you? That wasn't anyone. Nobody. I disposed of some garbage. Trash. Trash to be fed back. Fed back to what? My heart thuds as I watch Mateo's eyes fade back to the dangerous blank gleam. I have to calm him quickly or he'll lose it again. If I show him I understand, maybe he'll calm down. He was happy when I said I loved him. Maybe if I keep playing nice. I see. So, he deserved it? Yep. He deserved every bit of it. Okay. <laughs> he was scum of the earth, but I was kind and gave him a quick death. Memory of the event is enough to excite Mateo, and his expression spells danger for myself. If something as simple as walking away from the compound is enough to make Mateo angry, I can't imagine what this man did to warrant murder. That was kind of you. Very generous. <laughs> yep! I knew you would understand, Cece. You and I have something special. Just thinking about that is enough to send tingles up my spine. Do you feel it? Yep, I sure do. His free arm wraps around my side and pulls me against his torso. His chest expands and contracts with each breath. If I could, I would crush his windpipe. I'd run. I'd get out of these handcuffs. I'd cut off his hand somehow and get the hell out of here. You know, just... It shouldn't take you more than, like, 45 minutes. As long as he's completely still and compliant. <laughs> the image of such a task, as enticing as it might be, hits me with a wave of nausea. I swallow. I have no idea how I'm going to get out of here, but I'll do it. For now, I'll play any part he wishes to see. He's not going to kill me. When I say any part, I'll just give him a nice little smile, a nice little... I will a smile onto my face, trying to enforce the persona of a sweet, pliant companion. It's late, Mateo. Let's go to sleep. Um... Um... You're tired already? We haven't done anything fun, and the night is young. I could wear you out right here, right now. Okay, one, you're like 12. <laughs> And two, we're surrounded by other 12-year-olds. Also in their own box houses. It's going to have to be a hard pass from me. If, if 
you touch me, I'm going to kick him in the face. If he touches me, I'm going to kick him right in his stupid little face. Is he suggesting what I think he's suggesting right here with all these kids so close? Do I have to respond? That's okay. I'm very sleepy. Do you have something for me? Would you like to hear a bedtime story? No, because it's going to be about you murdering somebody. Which is actually going to be a very thinly veiled threat on how you will murder me. I shouldn't shoot down the offer right away. That would probably make him angry. Okay, tell me a story. <laughs> how about a little rhyme? They're fun if you sing along. The children like to hear them. Can you count the stars that brightly twinkle in the sky? Can you count the clouds so lightly floating by? God has marked their number with eyes that never slumber. He made them every one. He made them every one. Okay. Do you know how many children rise each morning blithe and gay? Can you count their jolly voices singing sweetly day by day? God hears all the happy voices in their merry songs rejoices. She loves them, every one. How did you like it? So great. <laughs> I didn't dislike it, but coming from Mateo, it's more than a little creepy. I liked it. I've never heard someone refer to God as she. Huh? It works anyway, doesn't it? It doesn't really matter, does it? Yes, I suppose you're right. So did it help you? Are you sleepier now? I can help you out again. Help me? Why do I even ask? I should just be like, nope, I'm so sleepy. I'm, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> yep. Hold still. Dude, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no. Mateo's hands fly back to my neck, pressing on the already bruised flesh. My breath catches in my throat just as I realize what he's doing. The expression you make when you gasp for air is so... Who raised you? <laughs> uh, get your fucking hands off me, you little shit bag. I scratch Mateo's finger so hard that I draw blood, but it isn't any use. If anything, he seems to enjoy it. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> you want to mark me as yours? Go ahead. No, that's not what I want at all. Should I go back and just be like, fine. <laughs> be bored with me? I don't know. I don't know. There's no good choices here. It'll be over soon. Stop doing this. <laughs> I wake with a start, freezing, but my lungs are burning from the cold. My shivering prevents me from falling back asleep as each involuntary movement shakes me awake. My stomach is empty, which isn't making the situation better. I've spent most of my time unconscious, and I haven't eaten since we arrived at the compound. I turn over, trying to conserve heat, and my body impacts against something solid. Um... Do you ever sleep? It, do, ever. Do you sleep? Are you awake? I guess. The soft breaths of the children sleeping feet from us, and the stillness of the alley are enough to calm me, else I might scream. I had almost forgotten that Mateo was there. Foolish. His voice makes me jolt. Considering his ordinary reaction to my innate revulsion, I pray to God that he doesn't notice the movement. Yes, I'm awake. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. <laughs> you didn't. I was watching you. What? 
don't know why this surprises me. I should be accustomed to it. Watching me. I watch you every night. I want to make sure you're safe. Again, do you not sleep? Are you not a person? I'm speechless, unable to comprehend or decipher what reaction is appropriate. Gratitude? Fear? Neither. I'm just gonna look at him like... It's too late. My silence is damning enough. I'm frozen and it doesn't have anything to do with the cold outside. You know better than to lie to me. I didn't say anything, so... What's the matter? Don't you want to feel safe? I do feel safe. Quick, think of an excuse. I don't want you to stay up on account of me. You have a lot to take care of during the day, right? I don't mind. I don't sleep. Why not? That can't be right. A person can't survive without sleep. Not at all? <laughs> I sleep sometimes, silly, or else I'd keel over and die. You must think I'm stupid. I bet you'd like that, wouldn't you? I would like that very much, sir. Thank you. Of course not. I don't want anyone to die. <laughs> oh, you don't? You're too nice, Cece. I guess that's what makes you so appealing. I... I don't agree with him. I'm not a nice person. If anything, I'm a bother to everyone who meets me. And now I'm paying for it. Absolutely fucking lutely not. We are not going to blame ourselves for this predicament. No victim shaming here. Especially when we are the victim. What is it? You don't agree? I don't know. It's stupid, but I don't know how else to speak to him. It's as if a vice is wrapped around my throat. I can breathe, but I can't speak. You're mine. You're so silly. It's no wonder people try to take advantage of you. Don't worry, I'll keep you safe and warm. He says, as he takes advantage of me. He envelops me, using his scarf as a blanket for the two of us. My skin feels icy from his touch. I'm... I'll go back to sleep. Sleep is uncomfortable, both from the temperature and the unrest of Mateo's shadow looming over me. I roll back over and shiver. Mateo's body curls around me. His arm is around my side as the handcuff restricts our movement. If only I could get it off and get a moment of privacy, then maybe I could make a run for it. My eyes creak open. But what to say? Hey, I, I need to go pee. Except, okay, no, I was thinking maybe I could go pee. And then he'll be like, okay, cool. I'll let you, you know, free from the cuff for a second and go pee. He wouldn't do that, would he? He would want to watch. Because he's disgusting. I don't want to go through the trauma of having him stand there and watch us go to the bathroom and get sexually excited We've been there too many times. I'm not doing it again. So we're just gonna say nothing. Maybe it's best if I just try to stay low. Mateo might be dangerous, but I need time to plan an escape. Are you asleep, Cece? Your breathing hasn't slowed. You're awake after all, aren't you? Why is that? Do you need help going to bed? No, no, I fucking don't. Leave me alone. Shit. Make something up. Fast. I need to pee, Mateo. F what did I say about avoiding this exact scenario? I feel like a child telling him something like this, but it doesn't matter. I won't stay here and meet the same fate as the corpse in the alley. I guess. Hmm. Okay. Wait for me. What do you mean, wait for you? I'm handcuffed to you. Why? Wait for him? What for? Does he want to hold my hand while I go? <laughs> I'm going with you, of course. I told you that I would always be with you to protect you. Especially out here. You never know what you'll run into. There's all kinds of vermin in the world. 
Not to mention this handcuff. You can take it off for a second. I'll be right back. Whatever I run into, it's surely better than staying here and getting smothered to death. No, I can't. I don't have the key. What did you do with it? Where is it? <laughs> Why on earth would you do something so stupid? It'll be over soon. But it's okay. We love each other, so there's no reason to keep any secrets. I can keep you super safe this way. Don't worry. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. It's only fair. I want... I, I, this is what I was trying to avoid. This is... <laughs> This is why I didn't want to use the bathroom thing as an excuse. The only thing I need to be kept safe from is him. But I'm not so stupid that I would voice this opinion. Let's go. Okay. Mateo takes hold of my hand and leads me away from the alley. I'm not getting any privacy, so I just have to get over it. Once again, I berate myself for being so stupid as to run away with a stranger. I wanted to take the easy way out, and this is what I earned myself. An asshole watching while I take a piss. Can I have some privacy? Can you turn around or something? It's humiliating enough that I have to ask, but even worse when Mateo stares at me as if I've said something absurd. <laughs> What's the point? Since we'll be together forever, we shouldn't have secrets, right? I'm just going pee. What do you think I'm keeping secret from going pee? Some sort of tentacle monster that pops out whenever I squat to relieve my bladder? That includes letting me see all of you. Throw away your sense of pride. It's pointless. I have a greater fear that he'll be the one to hurt me when my back is turned. As long as I keep him calm, I think I can work through this. I just need time. I'll figure it out. My eyes scan the area for a bush or patch of grass, but there isn't anything except weeds sprouting between the concrete. Mateo isn't happy about my choice, and I watch with horror as his expression twists with contempt. What? Why are you doing that? Doing what? <sighs> Going to piss on the plants? Where the fuck else am I supposed to do it? They're just plants. Oh, no you don't! Oh, that hurts. What? <laughs> how careless. You don't care how they feel, do you? Ungrateful little shit. Of course you would care about the weeds. The plants that thrive on stealing the nutrients and choking out the life of other plants around them. What? No, I don't care what I've thought about Mateo up to now. This doesn't make a bit of sense. We're still... I can't take care of a normal bodily function without evoking a dangerous reaction. What are you talking about? Foolishly, I decide to ask him to explain himself. Perhaps if I learn my lesson, he'll calm down. Yeah, right. <sighs> One day you'll die, and your body will sit on the ground rotting. And do you know who gets to eat you then? Is it you? The creepy crawlies and the vermin, the ants and roaches and beetles and bacteria and fungi. That sounds like you. And then eventually, you'll be nothing but a pile of bones, which will turn to dust. But you'll feed them. The undergrowth. This earth. They recycle you and grow something new. And you want to piss on them? Ungrateful. I understand caring for the environment, but this is an extreme reaction. You know what? We've made it this far with the choices we've made. Let's just fucking keep leaning into it. You're stupid and wrong. <laughs> it's just a weed. Besides, I'll probably help it grow. It doesn't really matter where I go anyways. When it rains, the runoff will just transfer everything. You must think I'm stupid. Yeah. Yeah. 
した、うん、<笑> Ungrateful It's a sentiment, your attitude. You don't care at all. You don't think. You don't care how your choices affect others. Not even the undergrowth. Using the handcuff, Mateo pulls my arm over and twists it behind my back. <laughs> It's just a weed, right? I can probably help you grow. I'll turn you into a beautiful flower blooming red. There's a difference, though, between literally ripping my limbs out of their sockets and pissing on something. Like, I feel like you're just exaggerating. Just, just a little bit there. <sighs> Mateo pulls out a pocket knife from his trousers and opens the blade. Oh, I know just what to do to make you pretty. A beautiful red spider lily. He holds me against him, using my arm as a brace, and presses the knife to my collarbone. You're mine! I'll bring out that lovely pigment. Want to see? Not on me. I'll wake the children. I cry out in pain. Someone has to hear me, to come and help me. Nice! Oh, that's very good. I'm getting excited now. I wasn't planning on taking your innocence so soon, but since you're so eager. <sighs> I hate it here. <laughs> Let's not do this. I feel pressure against my skin and then a jolt of pain. You can't run away. Do you see now? Do you see? Watch how the red washes over your skin. You see? They'll grow over your corpse and absorb you back into the dirt. Well, first there needs to be dirt in which I can be absorbed. I'm not gonna get absorbed into the fucking concrete and these two weeds growing in the cracks. You're nothing but a lump of meat! I whimper and recoil, trying to fight my way from Mateo's weapon. My efforts are wasted as he pushes the blade further into my skin. I can't look down. I can't look at the blood. I won't. But I can feel it leaking through my shirt and running down my torso. It's hot and sticky, stinking like metal. Let's peel back the skin and look at your bone. I bet it's a pretty white color. How about we don't? How about we don't do that? Mateo, please have mercy. That's not allowed. Mercy? You want me to kill you the way I killed that sack of shit the other day? Sure, let's just get it over with, man. <laughs> no, I guess. <laughs> There's no need to worry. You won't die from this. I'm only showing you what you are. A lump of useless flesh. Please. Yep. You don't understand yet. That's okay. I suppose the best way of instruction is repetition. He pulls the blade away from my collarbone and I sob. It isn't over yet. With my arm as leverage, he pushes me into the dirt and scrapes the knife along the back of my neck. I can't handle any more. My body gives out. But if it's from pain or terror, I don't know. Cold. Shivering. Save me. Someone, save me. I don't mean to be this way. I don't mean to be so weak. Is this what I deserve? No, no it is not. Is this the bed I made for myself? No, God, please, make him go away. When I open my eyes to Mateo's smiling face, I want to cry, scream. <laughs> Wow, Cece, you sure are a bother. It's so annoying to have to carry you everywhere after you pass out. There's so many ways we can fix that. <laughs> Could you stop doing that? It would be a big help. Now how about you sit up? It is not my fucking fault. Trying to pull myself upright is torture. My collar is sore, my neck is bruised, and my body aches from poor rest. I'm shaking and weak. I can't support myself for long. I haven't eaten in days, and my body isn't healing with the repeated abuse. The small relief I find is that Mateo doesn't seem to be in a bad mood. 
but I'm livid. I'll get him the first chance I have. Um... Well, we know he keeps a switchblade in his pocket, we just have to figure out which pocket. Once we can do that, we've got like one shot. Like, we can just go be like, oh, I wanna give you a hug, and then wrap our arms around him, and then just like, shoo, shoo, we got the switchblade. Then just start jabbing. <laughs> um... Not sleepy? It's daytime after all. I'm just a little cold. Eat shit. <laughs> I'll warm you up. Let's not. He holds me against his chest in a crushing grasp. He must want to break my ribs, too. You're really cold, Cece. That's not good. Do you want my scarf? No. Get wrecked. <laughs> no, that's okay. My voice is a pathetic whisper. It's all I can muster. <laughs> Go to sleep now. I'll wait for you to wake up. Okay. <laughs> I won't argue with him and evoke his wrath. I don't have the energy. Rest now. Bide your time. I force myself to shut my eyes, although it's difficult to breathe with Mateo holding me. There has to be some way to get away. Sergio will forgive me if I explain what happened. But as I think this, Mateo's hand curls around my wrist. He doesn't seem to understand how to touch gently. He presses the joint against his ear. It's the gentlest touch he's given me, but his grasp is no less bruising. <sighs> your pulse is fluttering here. It's like a tiny animal is buried under your skin trying to crawl out. Why aren't you sleeping? Close your eyes. Quit grabbing me! I'm trying. You know better than to lie to me. I can smell your deceit. Do you think I'm stupid? You aren't trying at all. It's been 15 seconds. No, I'm really trying. I'm just sore. Oh, I see. Do you need help falling asleep again? I can put you out right away. No, that's okay, I'm fine. I appreciate it, but I'm fine. I don't need you to put me out. <laughs> You know, some people like it. The feeling turns them on. Personally, I don't get it unless I'm doing the choking. The face you make is so stupid. Sir, you are eight years old. I'm gonna need you to calm it all the fuck away down. Get your shit together. <laughs> My eyes grow wide at this. It isn't the first time he's threatened sexual violence, but now that I'm so weak, the threat is yet more terrifying. That's not necessary. I'm fine, Mateo. Everything's fine. Just fine. You must think I'm stupid. I know you're lying to me. Well, what the fuck else do you want me to do, man? I... <laughs> I got nothing else for you. <laughs> Everything around you is dripping with your hatred. The rocks, dirt, grass, and air all around you. They're saturated with lies. You want to leave me. You want to run away and never come back. You can't run away. Sergio will kill you. Him and the rest of those idiots. They don't know. They don't know that every misstep leads them closer to death. <laughs> But I don't care. They'll get what's coming to them. I don't care who lives or dies. They're all just... lumps of meat. Yep! <laughs> I'm glad you see it my way, Cece. Okay. I relax as his features settle into a pleasant smile. I'm safe for the moment. Just a moment. At this point, going back to the Mafia is better than staying here. Even if Sergio will kill me, he... He wouldn't torture me like this, right? Would he give me a quick death? I feel like I could just be like, Hey, Sergio, um, I didn't go willingly. Your boy here is fucking crazy as shit. Look at all the shit he's done to me. 
Um, so don't kill me and go and kill him. And like, whose word are you gonna take, mine or his? Because look at me, you think I wanted this? <laughs> I wake again in the afternoon to the sound of Mateo screaming right beside me, and one of the children is crouched at the doorway crying. What? What have you done? What happened? The child whimpers in pathetic despair. I have to feel for her, but I'm too terrified to intervene. Beside the child is the corpse of an animal that one of the children has dragged into the alley. A doe. I just... I thought you'd like it. I'm still drained, but I manage to tilt my head far enough to watch the child. She's curled up, sobbing. Whatever she did, she's obviously regretful. The doe's neck is bent almost in half. Its black eyes are still open. Flies begin to circle the carcass. Fucking what are these people? Like, are they all some sort of, like, monsters? Are we just dealing with, what, what is this? How, how does she have the strength to snap this doe's neck in half? As horrid as this is, the child did it with supposedly good intentions. Mateo hasn't fed us in days. Maybe she was hungry? What are you doing? No, no, you will be punished. The girl cowers into the ground and Mateo lunges forward. I use the handcuffs to pull him back. It's all I can do. My worn body is enough dead weight to stop him. She... I don't think she meant anything by it. You must think I'm stupid. She knows better than this. We don't kill innocents. Only the disgusting beasts that scrape and kill one another out of greed and hatred. And me, apparently, who does none of those things. Mateo turns back to the child. My intervention was enough to spare her a violent reaction. You're mine. Do not do this again. Do you understand? I didn't kill it, Mateo, I swear. I just found it. It was already dead. She isn't interested in eating innocence. Bury it. Do it now. Who? Who now? The girl scurries away, not needing to be told twice, and desperate to crawl to safety. I'm happy that she could get away. I stare at the top of the box, my breathing labored. I feel like I'm falling in midair and the stained cardboard twists and swims. Who's she? Get up. No, not yet. Just a while longer. I groan and try to roll over, weak and fatigued. <laughs> wakey, wakey. I feel a sharp punch to the gut and I jolt up. With the breath knocked out of me, Mateo seems pleased with himself. Hey, oh sleepyhead. Get up. We've got a job to take care of. A job? Yep! Do I have to repeat everything to you? Again, this is not me asking for Claire, like this. not asking you to repeat what you said. I'm asking you to expand upon what you said. Uh, like, a job? What do you mean, a job? Like... Although it hurts, I can still move about with my cut collar and bruised neck. I shouldn't give Mateo a reason to be angry. For my own safety, I won't give him any reason. Where are we going? <laughs> We're going to feed my master. Oh, goody. Is this the voice? Is this the scary lady voice that just comes out of fucking nowhere? Just before I fell unconscious, Mateo mentioned something about that. I remember, but it's buried under a dark, cloudy haze. <sighs> Look, you see? Mateo cups my chin and turns my head into the alley. Just outside is a corpse. Its face is a bloody mess. What can I say? Protest? Scream? I'm just gonna look at him. I chose to remain silent. 
Mateo ignores this, evidently excited to get on with this errand. Let's go, okay? Okay, what other fucking choice do I have? <laughs> he presses a kiss to my cheek. I force myself to rise, ignoring my screaming body. Endure it. I've never been to this part of the city, wherever it is that Mateo is bringing me. Mateo carries the corpse on his back, slumped over his shoulder. Some semblance of humanity itches at me to find out who this person was, but I also don't desire to turn Mateo's temper on myself. As we walk, I notice that the buildings around us grow more difficult to see. It's dark out, but it's mid-morning. What's going on? Mateo is unaffected by our surroundings, yet this horrible darkness. I want to run away. Every cell of my body screams to run. Danger. Death. Get out of here. Mateo, I can't see. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm right here. I'll keep you safe, like I said. It's a very small comfort, but I have no choice except to follow. I stop in my tracks, but the handcuff linking the two of us forces me on. I stumble on, blind in the absolute night. How far out is this place? Where are we going? It'll be over soon. Silly, I already told you where we're going. Don't worry, it won't be much longer. I suppose he doesn't realize that all I gleaned from yesterday was one phrase, and I passed out immediately after. I hope we get there soon. <laughs> we will. Very eager, huh? I get it. We'll get to see some friends, too. Sergio or Ira? I don't think so. Mateo doesn't get along well with them. We continue on despite the dark. I can hardly see Mateo, who is only a foot from me. My collar is pounding with every step. Wish I had bandaged myself better. Our vision clears as we approach a different alley, but it is only a slight reprieve. Mateo throws the corpse on the ground. Like, how is he just carrying this corpse with absolutely no fucking issues at all? Like, from the description, it's a grown fucking man. How is this fucking six-year-old toting around a fully grown man dead body on his shoulder with zero issues? Keep quiet and listen, okay, CC? He doesn't have to tell me twice. I'm ready to get out of here. It's taking all my energy to stand. A black haze surrounds the area, encapsulating us. Two women approach, causing me to jump. My heart leaps for a moment until I see why they are meeting us. They are also carrying a corpse, but this one is lacking a face. From what I can see, the delicate flesh was cut away and peeled off. Why? What is it about the faces that is a big deal? Like, this one has its face bashed in, and then this new one that's coming in had its face peeled off. Like, my hopes of escape are dashed away. Hey! Hey! That's who I figured was going to show up, truthfully. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> so you're both here already. Good, good. What? Been a while. You haven't been answering my calls, Allegra. <gasps> and you haven't stopped calling me. Do you have something for me? I just wanted to check up on you and be sure that you're upholding our deal. What about you, Ophelia? I haven't had a problem with your deliveries yet, but I wonder what hanging around this one does for you. Yeah. I have access to plenty of garbage. She, on the other hand, deals with the finer people of society. <laughs> <laughs> On that topic, I should have a very nice gift for you soon. Lucian is just about ripe. I feel like that's the first positive thing I've heard on this route. Oh, no you don't! No, he hasn't felt enough pain. It won't be delicious at all. What? If that's what you're looking for, then you're going to be waiting for a very long time. Uh, Lucy... Lucian isn't one to let things bother him. I've had a hard enough time humoring him. What? It's not enough. It's not acceptable. 
The woman named Allegra is quiet through this exchange. With her arms crossed and eyes glued to the ground, I can see that she's uncomfortable being here. That's two of us. Yeah. Who's this? More street trash you picked up? Yeah. Just another witness pulled into this fucking bullshit. I don't know if it's my cue to speak, but Mateo told me to be quiet, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh no! Cece is helping me take care of my master's children. That's a curious way to put it. They aren't his kids. He takes care of them, so... The implication of this master thing is that Mateo serves him, right? So why would he treat those kids so badly? Fucking valid question. I don't get it at all. Mateo interprets my silence as embarrassment and offers me a cheeky grin. Right, Cece? We're together forever. Forever and ever. Gross. Get a room. <sighs> Like, she can very clearly see the cuffs around my wrist, right? Or the bruising on my neck and face and collarbone and the blood. Shut it, you damn c You don't know anything about us. <laughs> if you keep up such a terrible attitude, you won't have anyone left to love you. No one will protect you. It's just as well. You're another useless lump of meat. Go away. That's enough! We've done what you asked, so leave us the fuck alone already. You can't run away. It's too late for you to ask something like that. You're already so deep in this. <sighs> fuck you. <laughs> you know, you should be nicer to me. I'm doing all of you a favor. Yeah. Like hell you are. I'll find you. Believe me. Or don't. I don't care. Ugh. Fine. Can we get this over with? I have shit to do. You're free to go. For now. I need a meal. What a fucking waste of time. You could have come pick this up yourself. I have work to do. Mm. It's not a waste of time, Allegra. Let's go out for some cake. Yes, let cake. <laughs> After delivering a dead body wh whose face has been peeled off. Yeah. Fine, I guess. Anywhere is better than sticking around here. See you all around soon. <sighs> Fucking hope not. <laughs> the two ladies leave in an angry huff. I don't think they'll help me. They're helping Mateo with whatever this is. I glance down at the corpses, sick. On my... in my, Sick to my stomach? I'm gonna go with to my stomach. Is that it? Can we go back to camp? <laughs> Not quite. Stick around and watch. I want you to see. Watch... what? There's nothing here. That's not true. My master is here. Mateo points up at the sky, and I see a great blue eye peek out from the darkness. It blinks at us once, and then stares down at the corpse. What the... What the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> no! Isn't she pretty? No! No! Mm -mm. She? Pretty? That's not the word I would use. I don't have a word to describe what I'm looking at. The dark before us encroaches our standing place, and I involuntarily step back. What's wrong? Does it hurt? It's okay. She won't hurt us. She needs our help. She's very hungry. My eyes fly to the corpses, and finally, I understand what the children meant when they said that Mateo went to feed a pet. Just as I question how it might feed, the darkness around us creeps forward. I feel an icy chill, like a thousand shards of ice melding to my skin. Wait, so... How... Mm. Is it a master or is it a pet? Because if I were a master, I would not take kindly to being called a pet. Like, I might just have to pluck your face off myself and then eat you like a bag of Doritos. What, what the hell?
hell is going on? The corpse on the ground slides away, straight into the darkness. All that's left is a crimson stain on the pavement. There has to be some way for me to get out of here. What was that thing? A monster? A demon? I couldn't see it, but the ache of it left in my stomach has me more than sick. Just the sight of it. A horrible, looming feeling that smothered me. I'm curious, but it's a terrified curiosity. How is it that Mateo came to meet something like that? No. How is it possible for something like that to exist? I doubt he would answer my questions, even if I wanted to ask. The terror. The horror. I've forgotten the throbbing in my body from the previous day's abuse. I know it's only a matter of time before Mateo kills me. He'll feed me to that thing. That monster. Y'all, what the actual fuck? <laughs> What kind of fucking nightmare eldritch being are we feeding here in this alleyway? And why am I being forced to take part in it? I want nothing to do with this. I want nothing to do with any of this situation. It would be bad enough to have to deal with Mateo and his bullshit and just, just, but now I gotta deal with this fucking eldritch horror. You think you're bad, but I'm so done. <laughs> Anyways, life hack, just don't trust anybody named Mateo. <laughs> and if your name is Mateo, good luck to you. <laughs> Stay away from alleyways. Don't piss on the weeds, I guess. And I will see you later. No, I won't be much longer.